Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 13 of Draft Day Sports College Basketball, our journeyman save. We are at Northwestern State down in Louisiana, just outside the Shreveport area. And we are heading into conference tournament time. So I have not figured out, uh, let's send to that date. To end the season, I send to the conference tournaments and I guess that goes to whatever the first conference tournament is. So we had a couple of days. So I don't know. But it's weird because we ended up with uh, two games showing up on our schedule. I'm not sure why. Because uh, there's no way we could know who the next team that we played was, correct? At least I don't think that we could. So you can see I have not simmed ahead like I do during the regular season. So we will just kind of ease through this. Very disappointing season. You know, we finished over 500. We met both of our goals, but, but <laughs> it just wasn't, uh, wasn't what we were hoping for, I don't think. All right, let's see if we can find the tournament here. No? All right. It's got to be there, I would think. Maybe we have, Maybe we have to get to the day. I don't know. I have no idea. But you can see we went 16 and 11, 11 and 7 in the conference. A step back from previous seasons to be sure. All right, March 1st. I just want to I'm I keep wanting to see it. I'm I'm expecting something to pop up here, but nothing is there. Nothing at all. All right, well, uh so we are opening up at home against central arkansas they went 13 and 15 8 and 10 and you know the rules don't watch or we lose so we'll kind of glance down i can just see the flickering and yeah, my wife thinks that's funny but that shit's true we've proven that on this on this series sorry yeah whatever all right there we go all right so how did we do? See, I didn't look. We won 95-67. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, dear. <laughs> uh, let's see. 95-67. We were up nine at the break and just blew them out of the water. 19-point differential in the second half. There we go. McCleary gets on track with 19 points, six boards, 16 points for Walls, 13 for Flores, 11 for Bachman. Got 15 from Hunter off the bench. That's a solid performance. And Harris played seven minutes, our Englishman. There we go. I'd like to keep an eye on him. Cedric McCleary, player of the game. And that gets us into the next round. Now, again, why the tournament's not showing up, I don't know. I'm going to keep coming back to this. That's not helping me any. No idea. No clue why that's not showing up. Oh, well. Moving on. All right, so we play Nichols State, another sub-500 team, but we are on the road. And you know what that means. We're going to be in trouble. So we'll be back for the results in a second. All right, we're back. And, oh, road game. This is a game we should have won, and we lose by 8, 79-71. That's disappointing. 19 for Sims, 14 for Walls. McCleary, 4 of 6. I just feel like he should be shooting more. We haven't changed our strategy up since last year. We are balanced. Now, I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right, well, we are out of the conference tournament. So let's go ahead and sim to the postseason. And I will be back to let you guys know if we're dancing. You ever just have those days or moments or things that just you just don't understand? So if I select sim to the conference tournaments, why do I have two regular season games left? Inquiring minds would like to know. So those two games that we played, the win and the loss, were regular season games. Go figure. 
And as you can see, we were in the second round and we lost to McNeese State on the road as the higher seeded team. I guess this would actually be a neutral site, but this is a team that we've dominated this year and we lost by 22. No rhyme or reason. Steven Sims got hurt in the game, which, you know, whatever. It's the end of the season now. All right, so I don't know. I can't figure it out. But let's go back and look at that game, I suppose. All right, so there's – I don't even know where we're at. All right, there was Central Arkansas March 1st. There was the loss, right? We looked at that. All right, here we go. I mean, yeah, they just destroyed us. We were down 18 at the half. Never in it. Not a single starter was in, not a single player on the team was in double digits. Not a single one. That might be the first time all season. That might be the, only the second time in this entire save. 19, I mean, we took 45 shots and we hit 42% of them. They took 60. <laughs> well, you're not going to win at that pace. But, I mean, nobody shot well. I mean, 2 of 4, 3 of 6. You know, but no, nobody took any shots. I don't, I don't even know how you got to 45 with that. 9, 19, 26... I guess, yeah, but 45 is not a lot of shots. Disappointing, to be sure. All right, so we're out in the first round. Well, I guess let's just finish out the days and see how the teams do, and then we'll get into the tournament. We may not even – well, you know, we are playing with the current postseason, so there are four tiers – so we should get an invite somewhere. All right, so UNO over HBU in overtime by a point, and McNeese gets past Sam Houston. So Sam Houston was the number one seed. I don't feel quite as bad, but, you know, it's still, it's still not good. Hopefully McNeese doesn't win. I don't hate them as much as I hate, say, oh, I don't know, Ohio State, but, um, you know don't like them very much and they win holy crap all right well at least we lost to the conference champions how's that work all right let's just get through this we'll be right back well we've gone through the selection show so we are in the cbi so we made the last the fourth tournament so this is the east regional uh, i did see hbu make it there uh, the Midwest, I don't know where we're at. There we are. We're the three seed in the Midwest. So I don't know where we're traveling to, but that, uh, I wish that would, that would be kind of nice to assign it to somewhere, not just a, uh, you know, not just the region name, but that's okay. So we're there. Anybody else from Sam Houston state? All right. UNO. Wow. All right. So four teams make the make the uh, tournament there so let's scroll up back to the games grid hbu is in the cit as is as are we is this the right day i guess that is the day all right well, let's get it done don't look you're looking i can tell you're looking that means we lost all right, so that's going to be the next round. 62-48. You didn't look. Thank you for not looking. 62-48 win. Eastern Kentucky beat HBU to knock out our conference brethren. McCleary, six points. Harris, Harris 19. Oh, that's right. Sims is out. Uh, need to go check on him and see exactly what's wrong and how long he'll be out. So Harris gets the start, scores 19. 14 for Bachman. Walls, only four points, two of nine shooting. Flores rips down 11 boards. Degala, 10 points, but no rebounds. Mm -hmm. 
and Harris goes scoreless in nine minutes, doesn't take a shot. Everybody else played with the, the exception of the young guys. All right, uh, roster, roster. A toy. Oh, my God. So Sims is done for the year. He's done probably for next year, too. Oh, that's brutal. A torn Achilles. That was in the conference tournament game. Ow. Let's check our stats and see exactly what we're losing there. Sort by points. Oof. 8.6 points. 4.6 rebounds. 39% shooting. I mean, it's a big loss. It's a big loss. So we'll probably end up red, doing a medical red shirt on him next season. And he'll be back. Well, yeah, I don't know if he, he has not red shirted, I don't think. Sophomore. No, I don't think he's red shirted yet. That's going to be a loss. I mean, he's one of our better players. One of our better players. And he's been scoring a lot. Uh, let's see, depth chart. So it is going to be Sims and Harris. And then Sims. I really don't have another guy, do I? I guess we just bring him down the list. All right, we'll select him and move to Gala. Lumpkin. Now remember, I did not redshirt any of these guys because we missed that last season, which was disappointing. All right, suggest matrix, and we'll store that line up. Oh boy, boy, boy. All right, let's go. Uh, let's see. This is uh, both CIT games here. We'll take a quick look at those. And uh, New Orleans gets eliminated, as does Sam Houston State, so they're both out. All right, we're into the next round against Boston University. 20-game winners this year. Don't look, don't look. I almost forgot. I almost jinxed myself. Ah, uh, didn't matter. Boston beats us 84-73. I thought they were only good at hockey. Guess not. Walls with 22, Harris with 12, McCleary 7, Bachman with uh, 12 as well. 10 points for Degala. All right, well, that eliminates us from the action there. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish out. I want to look at the NCAA tournament. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and sim up to the final four. We'll go through the brackets. We'll catch up and see if any of our other teams survived and did well. Oh, yeah, don't need to see that. So let me do that real quick and we'll go through those. All right, let's go through a quick recap. So over in the CIT or CBI, for some reason, the uh, the name and the logo were mixed up, but this is the CBI tournament. That's the one we were in. Uh, Houston Baptist got eliminated uh, here in the Elite Eight or the Eventual Eight or whatever you want to call it. Uh, De De How do you pronounce that? De Quincy or De, De Qu Yeah, I think it's De Quincy. Yeah. Uh, 86, 73 winners over... I know I've heard the name before. I just haven't heard it in a long time. Uh, probably no March Madness this year to talk about them. Uh, Charlotte, there's actually a pretty cool fictional book that I read that was about Charlotte uh, winning the national title. Uh, it might have been called The Final Four or something like that. Uh, but anyway, it was a fictional book. came with a red cover and a gold basketball on it, if you're interested. It's got the mafia and stuff in it. Anyway, 82-73 winners as De Quincey cuts down the nets there in the finals. Oh, actually, no, they did not. They advanced from the final four. So they're in the final four there. 
Uh, over in the CIT, there's your final four. And in the NIT, your final four, Vermont, Belmont, Illinois State, and Western Kentucky. So let's take a look at the NCAA tournament. So you've got the Greensboro Regional out east. See, this is what I like where they show where they're playing. But uh, you've got uh, mostly chalk coming through, but it's number 10 Temple upsetting Michigan State. Gotta love that, right? Gotta love that. Uh, and then they fall to North Carolina, and the Tar Heels lose to West Virginia as number one seed Mountaineers advance there. Over in Columbus, Ohio State went down in the second round to Kentucky, and it's, again, mostly chalk with one exception. You've got St. Joseph's taking down number three Creighton, 71-64, and then beating Florida as well. Uh, who can't do the, their uh, famous gator bait chant anymore. Uh, and uh, Kentucky beat St. Joe's 107-81 uh, in a nail-biter there to advance to the Final Four. Over in Austin, again, 1-3-5, some of the top-level clubs. Villanova goes down to Purdue. Virginia advances. Georgia advances. But it's number 10 Louisville taking out the number two seed Gonzaga to advance and Virginia edges the Bulldogs 76 74 as another number one seed advances and over in the West we've got mostly chalk again again with one exception UTEP the mighty miners of Texas El Paso beating number three Marquette and then losing to Kansas Tight game between one number one Oregon, number two Kansas. One point separated them. 69-68 winners. And there is your final four. All four number one seeds advancing there. Uh, let's see. I want to go up here to the games grid, and we want to look at the top-ranked teams. So we're going to send to that date. And then we'll be able to go back and look. So, you know, we aren't going to see all the games from the other tournaments. But at this point, we should be able to go back and look at the winners. All right. So let's go back down here. Now that we've got that working and we want to go to the finals. So De Quincey beats Missouri 71-61 to cut down the nets in the CBI. The CIT, which again, those logos are reversed, and I'm not going to take the time to go fix them. 89 72 winners. East Tennessee State over Indiana State. I want to say, I could be mistaken, but I think East Tennessee State was slated to get into March Madness this year, and it was, you know, rare occurrence. And then, of course, the entire tournament was canceled because of. Uh, the coronavirus so at least they got some glory here in our little channel uh, over to the nit it is belmont i guess that's that's fair since they ran the belmont yesterday belmont beating western kentucky here's something off topic triple crown racing right so they run the belmont first the first time in history of the triple crown the belmont has been run first before, because usually it's the Kentucky, then the Preakness, then the Belmont. The Belmont is considered the graveyard of Triple Crown winners because you know they go. That's you know they say that's where they you know they go to speed horses go to die because it's a distance race. It's what a mile and a half. Well, they only ran a mile and an eighth yesterday, so I don't think I'm going to recognize a Triple Crown winner this year because not because they ran out of order but because the Belmont's not the same distance as every other Triple Crown winner in the history of Triple Crowns. Who knows what would have happened with another quarter mile? We don't know. We'll never know. So what do you think on that? Off topic, but, you know, relevant since Belmont won here. All right, and moving over to the NCAA tournament. And, yeah, we want to come back up to... The game grid. Hello, I hit the wrong button. Come on, quit doing that. 
All right, top ranked games. Here we go. Final four, all number one seeds. Well, that was lackluster by the Ducks. They laid an egg for sure. 68 48 win for Virginia. I didn't see the other score. West Virginia beat Kentucky 69 60. Wow. Just checking these box scores 17 points in the first half, and they shot 37% from the field. 27.8% from three-point range. Only 13 foul shots each team, but, and you can see that discrepancy. I mean, Virginia didn't shoot lights out, only 36% from the floor, but 39% from behind the arc. And that was the difference in the game. Interesting. And the other one, uh, Kentucky, West Virginia. Pretty close. Just Kentucky was down too far, couldn't make up any ground. 25, oh, 26 percent shooting for the game. Yeah, you're not going to win many games, and I would not expect the number one seed to shoot that. That's that's really disappointing for Kentucky. Oh well. So we want to move up to this date. So we have number one Virginia, 36 and three. Number one seed, West Virginia, 37 and 0. Holy crap, I didn't even notice that. Did you guys see that? Uh, I want, to, oh, polls. That's what I was looking for. So Kentucky was number one overall. West Virginia is number two. And Virginia is number five was Virginia, right? Yep. So, wow, this is uh, the Coal Miner Cup, I guess, huh? Virginia, West Virginia. 78-65, the Mountaineers cut down the nets. I don't need to watch the recap. Thank you very much, though. Uh, let's see. Award winners. Inbox. So, click the advance link. All right, let's just take one last look at our stats and who's going to be leaving us this year. So this is sorted out by points per game. So Joey Walls, he is going to be our big departure and point guard. He wasn't the best ball handler. He was a good passer, but he wasn't a good ball handler. Probably not the best point guard. So I'm looking forward to one of these young point guards coming on board uh next season uh that should be interesting to watch david bachman uh nine points a game he kind of carried the team down the stretch he is gone steven sims is going to miss next season i believe with that torn achilles suffered in the conference tournament cedric mccleary also a senior so we're losing three of our five starters and our fourth starter is going to miss the season with an injury. That brings Frank Flores back next year. Frankie Harris, our number one option off the bench, will be gone. We will bring back Calvis Hunter for his sophomore year. Degala will have some senior leadership, although I'm not sold on him with his attitude this year. Uh, Anthony Daniels will be coming back. Uh, no, he's gone. He's, he's a redshirt senior. Glenn Harris did red shirt. He'll be back for his junior year. Again, I don't think he's going to do anything. He's, he's going to be space on the bench. Uh, Luke Lumpkin will be a senior. And then we will have our freshmen coming in. Dwayne Houston, uh, Welsh Stewart, they'll be in. Brandon Jeffries and Ray Borman are gone. So that is... All right. So that is going on there. All right, let's take a look. Our Players of the Year. Individual awards, the Norton Award, Alan Agby. He's won this a couple of times. That's a familiar name from Virginia. He should be a senior, right? Yeah, he is a senior. Uh, does it have... Nothing? I can't click anything on him. All right, well, Jeff Brewer, West Virginia guard, most outstanding player of the tournament. Uh, the player of the year, 
by Wolverine Studios. Tom Giles, the forward from Gonzaga. Kendrick Roberts, Defensive Player of the Year out of Louisville and Freshman of the Year. And Steve Alford, Coach of the Year at West Virginia. Taking a look at First Team All-Americans, it's Agby, Benjamin Gresham out of Georgetown, Clifford Carr from Florida, Jabaru Burris, Maryland, and Bruce Edwards out of BYU. Second Team All-Americans, Nick Bryant and Javine Weems are guards, Michigan State and Kansas respectively. Charles Wilson, guard out of Kentucky. Kurt Booker, forward out of Arizona. And Oklahoma State center, Calvin Hall. So that's good for him. Let's go over to the Southland Conference. Individual awards, Kareem Smith, Houston Baptist, Player of the Year. Sergios Kachakalos, forward out of UNO, Defensive Player of the Year. Dwayne Humphrey, Freshman of the Year from Lamar. And Heath Schroyer, Coach of the Year from McNeese, goes 20 and 14 this year. First team all-conference, the aforementioned Kareem Smith, Ron Boddicker from Sam Houston, Doug Harris, HBU, Laurentios Diomedes, Nickel State, and Craig Malone out of McNeese. Second team, Todd Boyce from UNO, Gary Faulkner, Lamar, Sylvester Mason, HBU, Kochakalis uh, out of UNO, and Dwayne Humphrey from Lamar. Uh, do you see anybody missing? Nobody from our club, but that's not surprising. Uh, you know, we did have a lackluster season. So not a whole lot we can do there. All right. Well, we will move on to next season. I want to thank you guys once again for joining along for another year. And uh, so moving into the off season, this is where we kind of evaluate our job, uh, how we're looking. In fact, I'm curious real quick before we end all right season review all right they're you know they're happy with us we do have coaching jobs so i want to look at that i'm going to do that all off camera i think let's go check out our office here all right so our job security has now gone up to 60 percent by the way, I never did hear back from Wolverine on the job security glitch. Um, it's been about two weeks now, uh, about three weeks since I initially sent it in and about two weeks since I sent the updated information because it was a holiday week, I think, when I sent it in. So, uh, but yeah, never heard back from them. That was where we hit both of our goals and yet went from 100 down to what, 30%? Last year, we got up to 40 and a 20-point jump this year. Strange that a 28-win season only got us 10 points, and the season we just had got us 20 points. Go figure. Oh, well. All right, we've got two years left on our deal. Um, so I guess we can run in here real quick. Let's look at head coaching jobs. Charlotte, they just made that run. Oh, Loyola Marymount. If you guys have if you guys are on the younger side and don't remember Loyola Marymount in the early 90s, early to I think it was early to mid 90s, um check them out. Just look up some some look up some video footage on YouTube or something of them. And uh, Loyola Marymount, uh, Bo Kimball, Hank Gathers. Uh, what was their coach's name? Um, damn, he coached the he coached the Lakers for a while. Uh, in fact, uh, Paul Westhead, I think, was his name. He was the coach when Magic Johnson came in as a rookie. Magic didn't get along with him and had him fired. But he ran a really high high paced. Offense. These guys were scoring 120 points a game. Uh, it was insane. And of course, what they're mostly remembered for is uh, the Hank Gathers tragedy. So, some stuff to look up if you're not familiar with Loyola Marymount's history over in the West Coast Conference. But check that out. They were really fun to watch. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't see anybody there that's really got my attention. Um, where is my staff? 
maybe there we are all right so i'm two and two and three stars i've got one year left on these guys i need to remember that to re-sign them uh that's going to be something i need to remember to do next year 18 and 14 12 and 8 in conference we need to do better next year uh we'll take a look when we come back uh, next episode start of the season uh, I'm assuming we'll be back at Northwestern. I may bounce. I may look and just see if any jobs come up that get my attention. And again, I don't know if you can get passed over for a job if they'll reject you or if it's an automatic thing. So if you know, let me know in the comments. It'll probably be too late for this season if I take another job, but it is what it is. But um, anyway, hit that like button, subscribe both here at GM Games, where I'm doing this as a guest blogger, and head over to my channel at Raging Cajun 77346 and subscribe over there as well for my content. Guys, thanks so much. Another season under the belt. We'll see you next time. Bye.